Hello there, friends and enemies. <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed making the fan-made mechanics videos. They were so fun, um, and it's fun that it was something that I came across that I've kind of been thinking about for years in regards to like custom cards and stuff. You guys apparently also liked it. <laughs> so much so that some of you told me some of your ideas for summoning mechanics and other such things. I went ahead and combed through some of them and picked out some of my favorites. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of them today. The first few that we have are coming from Obi-Wan1234. Starting, we have Compaction Summoning. Monsters that have multiple lives. Their example is five Dark Magicians and one card. Uh, count as multiple monsters so they can be used for Xyz, Summon, Synchro, Fusion, etc. Can attack once for each individual monster on their card. I think this is a little too much. I think if you were to do this, it would be like one compaction monster per deck, or I guess compact monster would be the, the big thing. This sounds a lot like uh, Maximum Monsters from Rush Duel, where um, sometimes, specifically, let's look at Harpy Lady Sisters, they act as three monsters. They get three special attacks. But it is one big monster on your field, and it takes up your entire field. I think that is sort of what they're trying to go for with compact monsters. I have stated before that I really enjoy uh, this method of monster creation as a boss monster thing, so maybe it could work in a uh, master duel. They also submitted Spectral Summoning. Banish a monster from your graveyard and summon its Spectral Variant. Their example, Exodia the Forbidden One, is banished to summon the Ghost of Exodia or Exodia the Forbidden Ghost. That's fun, I like that. You 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 are required to banish your monster in order to bring out um, its spectral version, which could maybe be like um, fitting with the ghost theme, maybe have some sort of variant of its effect, or it could haunt monsters or something like that. That could be a little bit fun. Next up, G Karak1996 gives us um, a new card type called Duplex Cards that can be monsters, spells, or traps. And I think the way they, they mean that is that it could be a mix of any of those into a single card. So it could be a monster spell, like a pendulum, a monster trap, it could be a trap spell, something like that. You can have up to five in your extra deck in addition to your other 15 extra deck cards. I don't like that part of this. Um, I think extending the extra deck gives room for the game to be more than it already is. I feel like it should probably just take up the space that it takes up. All cards have semi-generic summoning for monsters or activating conditions. Uh, they all have at the center of the bottom of a card a number in a star called the star number. They can decrease or increase their star number to activate some effects. The star number change is permanent per duel even if the card leaves the field. The first time a duplex summon card would leave the field, they are shuffled into the main deck instead. Shuffle it and you draw a card. For the rest of the duel, the duplex monsters are treated as main deck monsters and the star number is treated as their level. That's interesting. Having an, a monster go from being an extra deck monster at the beginning of the game to when it dies, it becomes a main deck monster. I feel like there's a lot of room for error there, however, so maybe that stipulation could be left out. Maybe it could just have uh, I don't know. I feel like that stipulation just has too much room for error. They give an example here. Uh, Grey Quasar Light Dragon. A Light Star Dragon number 8. 2500 attack, 2000 defense. Requires two light monsters to be summoned. Quick effect, you can reduce the star number of this card by 2 regardless of its location. Except the duplex deck. And negate a card or effect. You can only use this effect of Light Dragon once per turn. And I uh, misinterpreted the next part of their sentence as a uh, part of the effect, but interesting. So it's a once per turn Omni Negate, which I think is fun. Um, hard once per turn Omni Negate that requires you to reduce its level. I like that. I, I like that. It's kind of like a less annoying Appaloosa. <laughs> For example, you have this monster, you summon it and use the effect, then in your opponent's turn you negate another effect but destroy it by battle. Instead of going to the graveyard, it's shuffled into the deck and you draw a card, let's say you drew it, on your next turn star number is 4, so you normal summon it from the hand as if it was a level 4 monster. Yeah, I think given that example explanation of how duplex cards work, I think that's a little too complicated. I think it'd be too easy to forget where you left it at. 
Um, I think it'd be too easy for people to say that their, their star number was at a certain number without someone being able to fact check it. Um, I just think it leaves too much room for error. I think it should just go to the graveyard. Otherwise, I do find uh, this to be fun. And lastly, the most recent one by Dark Angel IQ 4 Go. They said, I created a summoning mechanic called uh, Spectres. Basically, you must have a material on the field that is used as a receptacle for the spectral summon, but the monster to be summoned must be in the graveyard or banished, and you must find a way to discard it from your hand before summoning it. They say there are more rules, but I can't explain them here. I would um, love if you could, <laughs> if you would like to. You don't have to, of course. Um, but um, I do like the idea um, that seemingly a lot of people have where it's like when a monster goes to the graveyard What if there was a ghost version of them that came back? I enjoy that idea a lot I think that is something that um, should be explored further I feel like it's something that we should sort of figure out in the interim It might not be something that works for Yu-Gi-Oh! It sounds like something that would be more of a Magic the Gathering type of thing um, Like you discard this card from your hand to the graveyard and then when it comes back it flips into its ghost version That sounds like a Magic the Gathering type of deal I don't know how well that would work for Yu-Gi-Oh! But I think it's a fun idea So there we have it, we have your fan-made card mechanics. Uh, if you would like to add more, go ahead and comment them down below. I love looking at uh, fan-made stuff. It's always fun. Um, of course, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh being the game it is, adding in fan-made stuff kind of makes it a little more complicated and stuff like that, but it's always fun to imagine directions that the game could have gone, you know, given uh, if different designers were in the room or different people to pitch certain ideas. So let me know down below anything you would like to tell me about or anything you'd like to tell the world about because it is so fun to get to see this stuff. I hope you found something to enjoy about this video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, until next time, as always, drink your water.